So I suggest you grab yourself a cup of tea, or in my case, a mug of tea. And I'm gonna share with you all of the things I wish I knew before I was cabin crew. Now, I don't want this to be a negative video as I was writing some notes up for this video and I, it, most of it does come across quite negative, but I just hope this is useful to all you aspiring flight attendants and cabin crew out there. So let's get straight into it. So as I said, this isn't a negative video, I'm just being totally honest and open with you so you can kind of make a decision for yourself whether you think this is the job for you. So the first thing I will say about the job, and it's the first thing you experience really, is the hiring process. And it is, well, it feels a long time and it is, it can be months, it can be six months or more. Mine was around about four or five months, I think it took from, the interview all the way to my start date. So I applied for the job in November, got the job, I think it was early December, and then I started in March. So it was some time and it did feel like a long time. The hiring process is long. You have to have very in-depth uh, background check, obviously criminal background checks, all of these different things you have to have checked by a third party company. And it just is a long process and some things do go wrong sometimes, sometimes you get pushed back. So just be mindful that that can happen, but you have to be patient and it's all worth it in the end. Number two, there are quite a lot of health risks behind being a flight attendant. One of the main health problems, which I think I mentioned a few videos ago, is mental health. Um, a lot of people start off the job absolutely fine and develop mental health later down the line, and it is very common, but that's because your life completely changes, you don't get to see family and friends as much, you don't get to be at home for holidays such as Christmas and it all has a big toll on you and, and obviously being tired all the time does affect your mental health as well. As I just mentioned, you are tired a lot in this job and one thing you can develop is fatigue, so extreme exhaustion where it almost makes you physically ill. I haven't experienced it, but it, it does happen and, and my company as well as do other airlines take it very seriously. So it's very important that you have to let people know if you do get to that point, but our schedules are all made to avoid that happening. Another health problem you can develop is infertility and pregnancy problems, but your airline should be good with that, as when you fall pregnant, um, maternity leave is, is pretty much the same as any other job. As you move further along in your pregnancy, you then are often placed on ground duty, such as working within the airport, working within training, just so your baby isn't impacted by flying. Another thing they do mention in training is that obviously you are exposed to higher amounts of radiation being closer to space, so that can come with a array of health problems in itself. I'm not going to list them all because there's so many, but you can look them up online. When you go for your assessment day, they will ask you what current health problems you do have and they will make sure that the job is right for you and that flying isn't going to deteriorate your current health problems. Number three, I completely underestimated how tired I would be all of the time. I, I sleep so much when I'm working, it's absolutely insane. I mean, this quarantine's kind of allowed me to balance out my sleeping pattern, but I still sleep at awful hours. But flying, it's just, it takes it out of you and you really have to make sure you prioritize sleep when you're home, which sometimes means you do have to forfeit seeing family and friends. But it's so important that you look after yourself, get good amounts of sleep when you are home when you have the chance to so then you don't start falling into the fatigue bracket so that's something I will say is just be prepared to sleep a lot. Number four, a normal full-time job, eight hours a day, nine to five. Fine, cool, boring. A no a <laughs> An eight hour shift for us is short and I think the shortest shift I've ever done as a flight attendant is about nine hours. So yeah, be prepared that the shifts are long, but they go quick and I rarely look at my clock to check the time because you don't really know what the time is. You're all in different time zones, but yeah, shifts go quick, but they're long. Number five, 
Training is as intense as everyone says it is. It really, really is. And it was the most stressful six weeks of my life. And I think in those six weeks alone, I developed major, major anxiety. And I know that sounds really, really deep, but I just wanna prepare you that it is, it is tough. You have to be dedicated and go into training with such a blank mind to be prepared to take so much in. I don't know if this is the same for every airline, but every time we go to work and we have a briefing with all of the crew that we are working with before that trip, we have to either have a discussion or a quick fire question on anything safety related. So you have to be able to go into that briefing prepared to be asked anything that you learnt from in training. So that's pressure in itself. That's probably the one thing I really hate about my job. I know it sounds silly. It's like exams. I hated exams in school and to me it just reminds me of that. Number six, one tip I will give you before training is to save up as much as you can, especially if you are moving away from your home closer to where your training is going to be. That's something I didn't do because I thought my airline provided accommodation. They failed to tell me that. So I found out a few weeks beforehand that I had to provide my own if I wanted to get my own place. If not, I had to drive down from where I live, which is about an hour and 20 minutes from door to door, which I didn't want to do and have to get up crazy early in the morning. So yeah, you have to save up quite a bit of money for training for accommodation, food, as well as during training, you have to balance your lifestyle for the six weeks between resting, revising and eating. So it's it's tough, I will definitely say that, but as long as you go in there with a determined mindset, you'll be fine. Number seven, you aren't expected to remember everything that you learn in training for the rest of your career. You aren't just trained at the start and left to it. You have what's called recurrent training once a year. So you basically just have a, a mini run through of your initial training over a two, three day period where all of the basic safety stuff, how to operate the doors safely, uh, using manual handling techniques, how to open in an emergency of the doors, all of these different things that you are just familiarized with and you do do um, some more tests just to make sure you are fully knowledgeable up to standard what you need to know but yeah it's it's something that people can easily stress themselves out about and I had my first one in February and I stressed myself out and I did fail a couple of exams but it was fine because I could retake them but yeah I would just say as long as you can do the initial training, you'll be fine for recurrent. Number eight, you will very likely gain weight during your first few months of flying. The reason being is because your lifestyle is changing. When you're away, you're eating easy food, more takeout and fast foods, more room service, easy to eat food, snacky foods, plain food that has so much salt in. You can bring your own food with you on board the plane. I bring a salad every now and again and um, I guess more healthier snacky foods that I can just easily pack in my bag. But yeah, it's all down to you controlling what you eat, having a balanced diet, eating healthier when you're home, going to the gym. A lot of the hotels that you stay in have or give you free gym access. So make use of that. I have a gym membership at home as well. So yeah, just I would say a gym is a good thing to, to do while you're a flight attendant for your mental health as well as your physical health. Number nine, I mentioned at the start of the video that you never feel settled and you're pretty much always living out of a suitcase, especially if you have like one or two days off after your trip. It's just impossible. You just take out the bits you need at home and then just throw it back in the case and go to your next trip. So I did find it quite disheartening living out of a case all the time and it it really brought me down I never felt like I was at home I always make the the effort no matter how little time I'm going to be spending at home between trips I always unpack my case just just to make me feel a bit better and make me feel a little bit more settled at home so that's one tip that I will give you. It is more effort to have to keep packing and unpacking your case, but you can go check out my packing tips video, which might help you out in that aspect. 
Number 10, how little time you actually get to spend in the places you visit. So with my airline, it ranges anywhere from sort of 10 to 12 hours. So that's in Europe, if you're all night stopping in Europe, or it can go all the way up to sort of three, four, five days, depending on where you are in the world. So for instance, most places in America, 24 hours. On the west coast of America, so like LA, up to 48 hours. Depends on how long the flight is, the time zone, that that determines how long you get in each place. But when you think of it, it's not that long if you want to go and do things in different places. But the, the bright side of the job is you don't just visit these places once, you more often than not do go back. So you have plenty of opportunity to do things. What's good is other crew that you fly with can give you tips on things to do in different places that they visited and you haven't. And also give you like tips on price range of things, best places to go, what the hotel's like. So you all learn from each other. Number 11, you always have to look perfect, which is tough. It really, really is, especially when you're tired and you just cannot be bothered. I will say make the effort to make yourself look good, which in return does help your mental health. If you feel good, look good, it helps. So definitely I would recommend when you get home from, say if you had a couple of long haul in a row, when you get home, plan a pamper day for yourself, make yourself feel better. And as I said, that helps your mental health massively. Two things I will always make sure that I do for myself is have my nails done and always have my hair done. So I have my hair done sort of every eight weeks or when I can fit it around my schedule and my nails I have done about every three weeks. Those are just two things that I always make sure I do for myself and it makes me feel good. Number 12, you never ever have a consistent and set schedule. So you are given your schedule ahead for the next month and that isn't always exactly what's gonna happen. Things go wrong, planes break, you're late, you're ill. So that's tough and it's hard to plan a life around that. Another thing that I didn't actually know existed was standby. So standby is when you're on call. So to be in replacement for those crew members that call in sick or call in late. And there's two types, there's airport standby, where you're used for immediate flights and immediate reports that where they need you there and then. And there's also home standby, where they give you a good few hours ahead to get to the airport. But for my airline, we are called out two hours ahead. So I live an hour and 20 minutes away from my base at London Heathrow. So that means if I'm called, I have to be hair done, ready, uniform, case shut, packed in the car, ready to get in my car and go and be at the airport. If there's traffic, I'm screwed. <laughs> so home standby can be risky, but it's fine. I've never had any problems before, but it's more so they're inconvenient and no one likes them. You're anxious because you wanna be able to get stuff out and do things because you're concerned that phone's gonna ring all the time. That gives you more anxiety, so yeah. Standby, I've only had standby a handful of times, but it's just, it's just not nice and I don't like it. The other thing with the schedule side of things is that there is a chance that your work holiday, such as Christmas, sometimes your birthday, if you don't book it off. I always book my birthday off, my boyfriend's birthday, and I always make sure I book Christmas and New Year off, just to see if I get it off. I know it's likely that I, I won't, I was lucky this Christmas and New Year just gone as I got them both off, but likelihood this year I won't get it off. It's just something that you have to sacrifice going into this job. Number 13, there is chances that you'll go months without being able to see certain family members or friends, which isn't nice, but you go into the job knowing that. And I think this is probably quite an obvious one, but I wanted to reiterate it just in case some of you didn't know. I've had to miss funerals, I've missed birthdays. I think because you don't get to see family and friends as much as you'd like to, and it does interrupt your life quite a bit, it is, it is sad really. But yeah, you go into it knowing that, and you are able to apply for things such as like unpaid leave to try and get days off. You are able to use your annual leave. We get, I think it's about a month worth of annual leave, which you can spread across the year between the summer months and the winter months. 
it's it's just something you have to be prepared for number 14 time flies literally i'm not even joking from when i started the job in march 2019 to now time has flown by so so quickly literally flown by <laughs> but yeah it's each month goes by so quickly and it just sort of makes you appreciate time a lot more so like time you get to spend with your family time you get to spend with partners when i had my office job before this i was just going to work coming home having dinner going to bed waking up do it and again and i just i think I, I just absolutely hated that and this job has just made me open my eyes to realize every minute that you have means so much and you're privileged to have the time that you have so i definitely make the most of every moment that i have both at home and when i'm away traveling and i appreciate my life so much number 15 i think this one goes around a lot but you never work with the same crew like i've flown with the odd few crew members multiple times but only a handful you just work with different people all the time it's both a positive and a negative negative is if you're a bit of an introvert like i started off this job as an introvert it really can be tough to try and start conversations and it really puts you out of your comfort zone but as a, a positive as i said you you learn different things from crew every crew member supports each other as we've all been through the same thing from training crew members have experienced different things such as medicals emergencies and we all learn from each other so i think that really helps boost your confidence we can all relate because we all started off in the same place not knowing what we're doing being absolutely petrified on our first flight to then just doing everything on every flight out of your routine so yeah it's nice to learn things in different crew it's nice to make friends with people that are from all over the country as well i always try to see the positive out of working with different people and everyone always says to me like family and friends that talk to me about my job do you like it and yeah i, I don't mind it. it it's it works and it, it's obviously understandable we can't go working with the same crew all the time in this industry so i've just realized the camera bags in the way and that's really annoyed me so I hope everything I mentioned in this video prepares you for your future job as a flight attendant. I know it all sounded really negative, but I promise you I wasn't mean to put you off. I was just being honest and giving you the reality of the job. If you are contemplating on whether to go for this job, it is the best job in the world and I would say definitely do it. If you have any other recommendations or videos you'd like to see from me, let me know in the comments below this video. Please also leave a like on this video and subscribe to my channel. Your support means the world to me. And I'll see you guys in the next video.